talking about schools sustaining cities. So the world's population is continuing to increase year after year. Um, according to the United Nations, uh, 9.6 billion people will inhabit this earth by 2050, and 66% of those people will live in urban areas rather than rural settlements. In the United States already, the richest country in the world, food deserts, as you can see here, are already prevalent. The, the USDA defines food deserts as areas where it's difficult to buy affordable fresh food. And as you can see here, it's all across the country in urban and rural areas, and it's only going to continue as climate change goes up, and it's going to lead to a larger, as we said, 10 billion people, 66% of cities, a more compressed, larger, and unhealthier population with less fresh food and less livable space with climate change. So what is there to do? How can, how can we fix this when we're just going to be killing ourselves by having more people? Well, the good news is there already are um, urban, green urban agriculture and urban farming um, ideas right now that have been proven uh, successful in offsetting um, the carbon emissions and food, low food sources in cities. Yeah, there's examples of them everywhere. It's happening already. They're just not really getting the investment that they need at this point. Like this is uh, the city hall in Chicago. They have a green roof on them, so they can grow food on their roof. It lowers the emissions of the building. It, makes it less needed for air conditioning and heat because the plants on the roof keep the building hot or cold, depending on the season. Um, buildings like this have uh, resource DIY um, like gardening, which provides food for the local population, and it also helps to reduce carbon emissions. And there's also easier ways than ever to grow foods in small places for cheap. You can grow vegetables just out of the scraps of your old vegetables. So all you need is garden scraps, some water, a jar, and some sunlight. You can grow right in, you can anywhere that you want to do it, whether it's uh, in an alley or in your windowsill. Almost all types of fruits and vegetables in some way, shape, or form can be adapted to grow right in your kitchen. The only issue with all of this is, so all the technology and we know how we can do this, but it's not happening right now. We're not investing in it and people aren't doing this in cities as they grow. So how can we change that? How can we put these skills and um, adaptations into the fabric of society? And our big idea is through our youth and through schools. You could have guessed it's an education kind of day. <laughs> so green schools help to minimize environmental impact and also teach students to live healthy lives and build stronger sense of communities. You get stronger communities, you get students with more, more skills, more marketable skills in the workplace after school. And so you're not only helping the community just by these students being able to farm for themselves and know how to grow their own food in the place that they live, you're also helping these students by giving them a different way to learn outside of the classroom. I know from experience with like volunteering in high schools, when you just give students a different way to learn something, even if it's a whether it's a history project that they don't have to do usually or a debate team, like they're gonna learn more and be more engaged in other things just because there's something keeping their interest. Studies in the UK have actually shown that in schools that have gardening programs, the students are actually more self-aware of their community and treat the community better with respect and uh, better levels of environmental care. So less graffiti, um, less sort of damage to the environment. They're more respecting and understanding of what <laughs> so that seems to answer both of our questions so far. What we've said is the world's going in the wrong direction in terms of population and climate change, but we know how to fight against that. We, do, we can do that through farming in every neighborhood, not just in rural farms out in the Midwest. Uh, we are going to strengthen our communities if we teach these skills, skills to children, because as we said, 2050 is when we're going to have 10 billion people in the world. 2050 is when students who are in elementary and middle schools now are going to be people running the country legislating and budgets so so not only do we have environmentally and health conscious students we can potentially uh, decrease our health care costs we can reduce carbon emissions um, we can increase food production we can potentially create self-sustaining schools that supply their own healthy, fresh food to school lunch programs, and potentially self-sustaining megacities in which the food 
production for the city is grown in the school locally fresh produce. So in conclusion, what we're coming to is the way to sustain cities in the future and to sustain ur urban populations is through climate change, or I mean, um, urban agriculture, <laughs> green roofs, and how do we do that? By teaching kids about it right now. It makes for better schools, better cities, and stronger communities.